another day, another shoot. We are gonna be filming a stone restoration company. And we are getting some awesome footage, mostly B-roll style shots, smooth, steady. I'm gonna compile into a video showcasing the work. We'll grab some stills while we're at it. So let's get fired up. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Peter Mokery, a Dallas-based DP photographer gaffer with a one-ton grip van full of aperture lighting. I am available for hire. On this shoot, it was outdoors, outdoors, outdoors the whole time. Covered the span of two days, four hours one day, four hours the next day. I was doing photo and video, kind of getting a mix of things for this client. They wanted to get something um, to pump out for social media, um, for a small little commercial spot that they wanted to kind of push around showcasing their work their work They wanted to kind of make the jump from just their typical iPhone stuff that they do because they cover a large variety of clientele from big commercial jobs small homes big homes and uh, reoccurring um, Contracts with facilities where they constantly want stuff cleaned and taken care of so on this job we were cleaning prepping so like washing cleaning with uh solvents or uh soaps and then prepping they put sand in between some of the stone and replenished it and then in the end they seal it on the second day and make it nice and waterproof but they also added a um additive that makes it where it's a little more of a satin look and it makes it more uh, grippy and slip resistant so we were in the heat it was reaching like 110 to 115 outdoors in this heat the stone is reflecting a lot and it creates a lot of just difficulties when filming everything was hot it was scorching hot and then dealing with that kind of sunlight trying to get good exposure trying to get stuff in focus even with a high bright monitor makes it really difficult just in general so these conditions aren't the best you have to stay hydrated you have to be able to move around and getting photos and videos for this client made it difficult switching back and forth because some of the shots and processes were just so quick then I tell them we may have to fake it again if we were able to. Otherwise, we just missed it. And then I had to ask the client, what's your priority? What's important to you? Is it photo or is it video? What's the number one most important thing? If I don't get anything else photo wise or video wise, what's most important? He said, well, video is priority. And that's kind of part of the process that I established with the client early on is saying, you know, manage expectations i'm doing a lot normally we'd have a photographer out here handling things so since i'm doing both jobs i can't do them simultaneously so we have to pick and choose sometimes and prioritize one thing over the other in just a moment i'm going to show the footage that i actually got the video footage this client actually didn't have a preference on if we were doing slow motion or regular speed so i did actually film at 60 frames per second with a deliverable of either 30 or 24. Uh, the clips I'm showing you in just a moment will actually be at 24 frames per second. So it's gonna be slowed down two and a half times, 40%. You can see my ability to move around quickly with this easy rig and function really well. So it gave me the opportunity to not have to put a tripod down or you know, go handheld and go shaky um to just get a little shot they wanted a little bit of a flow to it and they liked the idea of a gimbal so this is going to wrap out our day here all right that's a wrap for today i come back out in two days for the rest of the process we're just capturing b-roll we're not doing a how-to on the process what it is is they clean the stone then they go in and treat the stone and seal it up so it holds its color, doesn't get nasty from the elements. So we're wrapping up right now. It's hot, I'm over it. And we're gonna move on to day two. And now on to the buttery B-roll footage. This is actually a friend of the client that came out and acted like a homeowner. 
with the footage throughout the two days, the first day we shot early morning, so it was dark in the back of the house. And the second day we shot in the afternoon, late afternoon, so it was very bright, harsh sunlight. So I didn't have the ability to really match footage up to make it look amazing together because you see here it's in the shadows and in the darker areas. And then here we have sunlight and we have some good contrast. So it made it a little difficult. This isn't going to be a million dollar spot that's gonna play during the Super Bowl. So the client's not gonna be able to tell the difference and be like, oh wow, I don't like that because you know there's some shadows there or there's not shadows there. So we have to manage expectations and then also manage deliverables based on the client's needs, wants, and budget. So I was focusing on trying to get some wides, medium, and tight any chance I could, but just remember I was also switching between photo and video. So I had to cut between the two, especially when I saw something really nice. I tried getting the crew working in close proximity to each other as well to kind of show that it wasn't just a one man band uh, doing these projects. And I was able to get some really amazing shots. So here's the waterproof process done. You could see the water beating on it. It's doing its job. So now we're going to cut over to some big news I have. Stay tuned till the end of this video. I may be getting a new van. I may not. Cart's gonna come out. We know how that goes. I showed you in a previous vi video. We've gotta take all our overheads off here. So I'm actually gonna show you how I have that set up right now. It's two, uh, it's ratchet straps that are hooked in and I have foam, some of this black closed foam, uh, closed cell foam up on top and I have it glued up there so it's not rattling all the time. It's rattling now, I could probably get another click. But they're hooked on each end. I cut off the excess. So I unhook them. And then it drops the frames down. So then I have access to them. And that's how I get the frames out. I don't need my hat right now, so I'm gonna just set it off to the side. So this is how I remove my frames, add my frames. So here's a six by, and then I have eight bys in there. And that's another thing with this van is it's very limiting. I could only get uh, pretty much eight foot frames in the back, which is tough because a lot of times people want access to four, six, eight, 10, 12, e even longer frames. And if I get a bigger van, I'll be able to carry speed rail as well. So I won't have to just add that all the time for like my Dana Dolly or for rigging. I'll able, be able to have that available. So that's that portion. Let's move on to something else, cut. All right, so the next part is removing the flags, cutters and whatnot. Uh, I have them in these two sections here. This one's real simple. I'm able to just pick it up and move it out. These I have to remove by hand, but when I do remove this, which I'll show you guys something really cool, is I have this shelf here. So if I don't have these with me and I have the shelf, this actually pops out and uh, fits onto my carts to give me some extra height. So then it creates the top shelf on the cart that has support so stands can't roll out and then it has another top section. And I have these little uh, vertical supports here so things can pile up, but I leave it in here for when I need it. Right now it's clicked in, so watch there. And it actually ends up wedging into the shelf. So I gotta knock it loose. Did that a bit aggressive, but so it's knocked loose and it sits here. So we have this reflector here, five in one, and then we have this dome or lantern here. And this shelf is able to come out. So when I get on site, just slide the shelf out as it hooks on to everything possible. 
it's lightweight and then I set it on top of a cart so it makes it real convenient so this actually fits right on top of the cart so if you come this way you can see I have the receivers here to take that shelf on top which it doesn't fit in here now but when I pull it out I could stick it in the hole so something to consider is I have the option to pull any of these things out and just stick them in the holes and make it work <laughs> cut hello welcome to my van so just cleared out all the flags out of here this section here I elevated so I could have different things on here you saw the shelf that was here earlier the reason I designed it this way is to make it almost modular um, I used to have this to be removable and it still can it's only held down in four points but this is three quarter plywood it is cabinet grade plywood it is really strong it's not the 20 30 dollar sheets whatever it goes for now these are 70 80 90 dollar sheets of plywood so they're really good and strong i've had this in here for about four to five years and it's held up really well it's got some chipping here and there but it is really strong and it can handle weight so i've had it on the floors as well this part gets a lot of damage from stands and things like that but you can see it's so strong even when i use smaller pieces to fill in gaps um it, it holds up really well so what i did here if you look under here the floor is not level with some of the trim so i put wedges in here spacers to level it out when it gets a little weight on it ends up sitting fine this i had it put in separately because i needed the height to get stuff in here because of the clearance right here i can't get four foot um flags in here i could get them on the back so i ended up getting like 40 by 40s but yeah the clearance issues here so i made this separate it's a standalone piece it sits in there this shelf is really strong it can hold a lot of weight so if i ever need to crawl in here move around it's strong it holds up and it's really great for pelican cases so that's why i had it set up this way i could put a bunch of pelican cases camera bags whatever stack them high if needed or put that shelf in to get separation and i built it out that way i used what i had around i i'm a scavenger i'm a scrapper when i can if i see something on the side of the road that i could use i'll pick it up so these are actually from uh, a server rack it's aluminum from a server rack i was like oh that's lightweight i'll put that in there and i bolted it up and it holds up really strong and really well down in here i have e-track and that's these things there's many different styles you can use it on the oh. let's see get this guy out there it is um this is a hook and you could put it anywhere in this e-track when it wants to cooperate so you could hook things in over here is how i hold my cart in and these are chocks that um catch my tires or casters on my cart so it's a stopping point so it's actually not touching this up here it rolls in and it gets wedged and then i get that ratchet strap all the way to the back and it hooks in so it's real quick and easy but i have the ability to adjust this any which way if i need to uh, crank something down and you could get this at harbor freight off amazon northern tool uh, a lot of places carry this stuff any trailer place will have it you could put it on the ground uh, the sides anywhere you need it but it's low profile and works really great and holds up well this same wood material is what i build my carts out of so real strong real heavy duty and it's replaceable so you don't have to have any super custom skills like a welder and a lot of you know tools to cut certain things makes it real simple um, so if you come around to the back you can see I had to also, because the lip kind of curves down, I had to put three layers of the wood and sandwich it so it stays where it needs to. So when stuff comes in, it holds up. The floor is really, which you'll see once I get everything out, is really soft. It has like a 
like a carpet pad underneath it and then it's just like a, a flexible plastic sheet on there that's not really strong it's like rubberized but it's not really thick and it's just laid back there so it wasn't good for carts it wasn't good for loading and unloading so having a flat surface is good in my new van i without a doubt will have a flat surface to start with and i will possibly do wood uh, or figure something else out but yeah this all came together a certain way and the way i wanted it to and it worked out in the end hello friends i'm gonna take the cart out of my van it will be ejected got to make sure it's nice and straight and lined up before you start don't have any of the wheels turning because if you start going and the wheel is turning it catches to make it turn around while on the ramp is really bad so make sure your wheels end up going straight And that's loading it, unloading it, whatever you want to call it. So a lot of people have asked how strong my carts are and what kind of uh, payload capacity they're at. I don't have them officially rated. Actually, look up here. But they can hold a lot of weight. So this is loaded down with you know 10 C stands, gobo arms, actually 11 C stands, all kind of grip hardware, the weight of the cart itself, you know, all kinds of things, and it's able to hold my weight which is an obesity weight of about 250 pounds. See, my hat almost flew away, but I'm not flying away anytime soon. So just wanted to show you the build on these. Uh, these casters are rated at 600 pounds each, and they are actually called semi-pneumatic casters. So there's no bowing out or going flat or flat spots being created. They hold up really well, and they also roll really smooth. If you can see, I mean, I'm able to just move it around. So really great setup. This is a DIY, DIY, DIY cart built by myself. I'm not an engineer. Build it at your own risk. But I really love the way that they're done because I could add so much to them. Hello. Welcome back. So this is the van when it's emptied. You could actually still fit in here. Some people can. You can have a seat with a friend and chat. How's it going? Or you could use it to fill up with all your stuff. I've shelving over on this side. This is some of the build out shelving that came with the van. So I kept this one. I had it on each side, one here, here, and then another one was here. Um, but you see how it sticks out a lot. I could only fit one cart as a result in. I removed two of them, kept this one, and I use this for my uh, rags and at some, sometimes diffusion, whatever the case may be. And then this shelf, like I said, can hold all kinds of things. These were built out originally to hold flags. So you could put 24 inch ones here uh, and then 36 inch ones here, which are 24 by 36 and then 18 by 24. So I had flags in here and then over here, I would put my uh, aperture domes vertically and I could fill it all the way up with those. And then I put these in here for when the carts hit so they don't hit the wheel wells. And that worked out really well because you'd get bumps, it'd work out, hold up real fine. You can see this floor has got a little bit of wear to it. You can see the dark marks here from where the tires would land but this is the wheel chalk system and i got these sorry my pocket keeps bulging out um i got these they're called parking mats and i think i got them from northern tool what's really cool about it is when you load in you go and it, your your caster comes to a stop here now if you're on a slant backwards you always have a big truck come by that's really important um the cart won't roll out. So if you're kind of on a, on, a, on a hill pointing up, when you put your cart in, it's not gonna come rolling back. You actually have a little bit of a stopper here to put in. And I had these in on both sides before. And that's great if you're running two carts. So you could have you know two for each cart, so a set for each cart. But I ended up stacking a lot of my crates over here because a cart 
with two shelves would give me about uh, six crates versus here I could put four tall, four tall, four tall, four tall, giving me 16 crates. And then I still had some room back there for other things. So it ended up working out a lot better for me removing these because these were always an issue and just having it happen that way. So that's the build. We're gonna be taking this whole thing apart, removing everything um, to get it prepped for trade-in. And we'll go from there and see what we got going on. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great van. I've had this van for four and a half years and it's held up really well. It's done the job, but I'm busting at the seams. If you see some of the stuff that I bring onto set, it's just not enough space. Now this van, if you're just doing camera, with a little bit of lighting, it's it's a great size. You could do so much with this. You have two fully rigged out carts ready to go. There's enough room between these to you know have two foot wide cart, two foot wide cart with a little space to go. And it worked out amazing, but now it's time to uh, move on up and have a little more room and not have to break down equipment so much. I often had to have a cart on the back of the van or, or mag liner, take it out and then unload stuff. And then when loading, you unload the cart and load stuff up. It took a lot of time. So hopefully I could resolve that with a new build. So here's me gutting out the build-in that I did. Everything that I upfitted inside this van, plywood, different things. It was a lot of work. It actually took me like four or five full days to kind of rig it out and make it the way I wanted it. And it's a learning process because I've had many iterations of this build and it finally landed on the one that worked the best for me, but it kept changing. I used to have it as a one cart and had a real big build in before, and then it turned into what it was, but this is how it looks empty, completely empty. Um, yes, I have a couple uh, tool bags right there don't want to be left out on the road without, you know, tools to, you know, do whatever I need to. But yeah, emptied out. So what I did is I washed it up. I completely emptied it out, uh, cleaned it inside and out. Uh, my wife did an amazing job helping me. I handled uh, ripping everything out from the inside while she was working on cleaning up inside the cab. I keep it fairly maintained, but sometimes you get dust and dirt does work its way in. And I cleaned the whole outside of the van, made it look shiny. I didn't focus on the rims. I wasn't gonna shine those up and put tire shine or anything like that, but I got it all cleaned up and looking good so I could see what the trade-in value could be. And this is me on a shoot with all the junk thrown around. I hate it. Without it built out, everything lays on the ground. You're wasting all the upper um, space. So it makes it real difficult. So what van should I get? Should I get a Ford? Should I get a Dodge? Should I get a Mercedes? Should I get the bigger version of this van, which is discontinued, but it's taller? What should the next jump be? Should I just get a giant grip truck with a box on it and go from there? Give me your insights. What do you have your eyes set on? What do you want? Thanks for watching.